YouTube, this is Felicia with Bible Scraps, and I have the coolest do-it-yourself tutorial to share with you guys. I kind of gave you a sneak peek in my last video, which was on cookie cutter gingerbread ornaments. But take a look at these. Oh, I'm excited about these, you guys. Handmade, homemade, perfect as gifts, but also perfect for party favors. Take a look at them. Gingerbread man, a fall leaf, a turkey, and a pumpkin, you guys. These are little trays with lids. So cool, right? <laughs> you can customize any color you want. If you can find the cookie cutter, you can make it into a trinket tray with a lid now you can make these without lids too as you see here as a matter of fact i think which one did i share in my last video you know what i don't know oh here this is the one i shared in my last video it's a candy corn i did not make a lid for this one i made this one last year and i made all of these within the last couple of days well actually we're gonna make this one in the video and we're gonna make this set in the video. But these are super cool, you guys. I'm using all metal cookie cutters here. Now I have to say that depending on the kind of resin you use, the kind of cookie cutter, whether it be the metal or the, the steel type or the copper, that will um, determine your final your final product. So you might have to experiment. You could pick up all of these particular cookie cutters at your local craft store or Walmart or grocery store. I think these are all Wilton. Yes, and take a look, super adorable. I love it, love it, love it. I've never used resin in this way before. You totally have little trays for your eyelids, for your beads for your small type of little embellishments. These will look so cute on, on your fall craft table. <laughs> How fun to pull these out, right, every year and to know that you made it. So I'm gonna give you guys a little tutorial on how you can make it. I'm also going to talk about some tips and some things that just did not quite work for me. So enjoy the tutorial. You want to always wear gloves to protect your hands. And I'm going to color my resin using a product called Cast and Craft. It's a pure, very concentrated color pigment. You don't need that much. Shake up your resin. I'm pouring two teaspoons in a one ounce medicine cup. And I'll do the same for part B. And then I'm going to take part B and pour that into my larger medicine cup that has the pigment in it. That's a two ounce size cup and stir it together. You want to do this before you pour in your part A. Now, as you can see, I'm not getting the color that I should get. I should have a rich brown color. And that's because I did not take enough time to mix up my color pigment. I have not used this since last year. So it needs to be mixed up more. Eventually, I will resort to my Recollections brown milk paint. But then you're going to see I poured way too much because it caught me off guard. I normally would use a spoon or the wooden stick to pick up a little bit of the paint, but I'm going to pour it. Yeah, and that's way too much. But you know what? I'm going to take that out and see if I could still use it. <laughs> this milk paint, I love it, and Michael's no longer have it. Now I'm going to pour in Part B and stir that in. But you'll see, because I didn't stir it correctly, my resin piece will not come out. It won't cure properly. Now you want to lubricate your cookie cutter with oil before you make your resin. Once you have it thoroughly stirred, go ahead and pour it into your cookie cutter. I'm using a liner underneath, which is an Oriental trading sheet, magnet sheet liner. And I've set something It's been about 25 minutes and I'm ready to demold. Now here's the thing. 
when working with the metal cookie cutters and the resin. If you leave the resin in too long, it will set on the inside. Even if you spray oil all over your cookie cutter. So you want to demold at the appropriate time. Timing will depend on the resin you're using, the temperature. So you want to stick around because if it stays in too long, you will not be able to get it out. So here you see that I'm removing the excess around the perimeter, being very careful because my resin is still soft and pliable. And now I'm poking at the top part, trying to push the resin out. And I am having a difficult time at certain um, points of it. But eventually I will get the entire piece out. Be gentle and be patient so you don't distort your so image. So here's my resin piece and I did not stir correctly. I did something wrong because that part right there did not set. It will eventually harden, but this whole piece is soft. And so perhaps I added too much pigment, paint. I want to offer you guys a cool tip that I discovered playing around with my heat gun. I shared this tip in my gingerbread cookie cutter resin tutorial, but use your heat gun, which is great if you leave your resin in too long and it begins to set and certain parts are hard to demold. Take your heat gun and heat up that area. Right here, I wanna clean up this cookie cutter but it's hard. Well, if you heat it up, you could easily pull up those little specks and pieces of resin. Also, it will help you demold the inside part if it sets and gets stuck in there. So that's, that's pretty cool. Okay, when I made the lid for this turkey here, I had the ridge side of the cookie cutter, which hopefully you can see, I had that face down. Now, you can keep the orientation of this turkey, which is to the left, but then you would use your lid, you would have the face up side face down like that. So you could totally do that. That's what I did with my gingerbread man here, but, if you wanted to have your turkey going this direction, which is towards the right, you could totally do that too. Just face it towards the right and you would have your ridge side face up. Now, I don't know if it makes a difference if you make your lid with the ridge side face down. That's just how I did it. It may not even matter. So I don't know. And I hope I didn't confuse you guys, but the point is you do have options. You could have your lid face up or you can have your lid face down. So just keep that in mind. Here I'm deciding if I want my lids face up or face down. I've decided to have the lids face up and I've already mixed part of my resin. I'm pouring the second part in. That orange is so pretty. I'm gonna pour it inside my cookie cutter and hold it down for a second. I let the resin get hotter before I poured it because I wanted less spillover. And here I'm just peeling back all the excess. And you'll see when I peel back the turkey, it peeled back better. I mean, this isn't bad, but I didn't let the turkey sit as long and it did peel back better. So perhaps if you demold earlier, it'll be easier. You could use scissors, use your fingers to get rid of that residue. Um, and the inside is still pliable because it's still curing. And look at that, that's so pretty. I love that brown and mustard color together. I'm gonna peel back the edges there and I really, this was really, this one was easy. But I did learn something and I'll talk more about that later on in the video. Those ridges do make a difference. And you see, this is the one I had the problem with. I just couldn't get my lid on correctly. 
This one I was able to get it in. Mind you, that's still curing. But I grabbed my good old uh, buffer, um, what is that called, sander, I got from Michaels years ago. I want to smooth out my edges and I want to file this one down in order to get my lid to fit on a little bit better. It is workable. I didn't have to do this with my gingerbread man. And I'll talk more about that later. And I still just can't get that lid to fit. I can bend my cookie cutter a little bit. All right, you guys, these are my completed cookie cutter resin trinket trays, boxes, whatever you want to call them with the lids. These are adorable. Now I do have some observations for you guys. This is my gingerbread trinket box here. And he sits nicely. He fits nice and snug. You just heard him click in the inside. And I think I like this style better, meaning with the lid face down and having the ridge part of the cookie cutter on the bottom of the tray. Reason being, well, the turkey is face up and the turkey lid, it will position and situate on the top nicely. It's still curing this base part and the lid, so I wanna be careful. But the pumpkin, I'm, I'm having problems getting my pumpkin lid in there. And I filed it down. I've also bended the cookie cutter part. Now this base is still molding or curing, so I do wanna be careful. But I've done all that and I'm still having a problem to get it to sit. And if you pay attention to this raised part right here, that might be why and I have the ridge part up. So um, that might be obstructing the lid. It could be too that this lid is just too thick because I had too much resin. But I'm thinking more so it's because of that rigid, this part right here that's sticking out. I'm gonna play around with it because I know I can get the lid on. I've done it before, before I put my, my little handle or my little knob on there. Just keep that in mind. To be safe, I think it's better to do have your lid face down, but it is awfully cute too when you can have your lid face up because you get the you get your image facing you. And if you want to know how I made these knobs, I'll have a link to my tutorial in the description box. But I do like how these came out. They're adorable. And the colors, check out that mustard color in the turkey. And I kept my gingerbread man, a brownish pink. And my leaves are um, the mustard too. And made my pumpkin, of course, orange. Now I picked up, ooh, I picked up this leaf from Michael's last year. My store don't have these in stock yet, so I will be picking up more. And I think I got the pumpkin last year too. But the turkey, I just picked that one up. And I got the gingerbread man from Joann's for a dollar. Of course, use your coupon and you save even more money. So yeah, these came out nice. I'm gonna to continue to play around with this one here. I'm gonna get it to work somehow, some way. And I thank you guys for watching, and as always, blessings.